next speaker was re recently featured in Quartz on why you need a work BFF. Isn't that cool? By which I mean I wrote her about her in Quartz because she is my work BFF. Uh, so Ellie runs the mobile team at Automatic, which is now 53 people. Um, and they release three apps on two platforms uh, multiple times each month. It is a huge production, and it is incredibly fascinating. So I am really excited for her to share with you how that all works. And speaking of people who came a long way, she came all the way from Montevideo in Uruguay, which, if you don't know where it is, is very south. <laughs> uh, somewhere between Argentina and Brazil, but like much better than both of those places. <laughs> Find me in a break, and I'll give you all my tourist trips. Um, all right, so everybody, please give it up for Ellie. Thank you. Hi. Thank you, Kate. Uh, thank you, everyone that's worked on organizing the event. It has been great so far. And thank you all for attending. You may all be wondering what kind of person does a talk on streamlining mobile releases, and I will tell you the kind of person that has done one too many. So today, I'm just going to talk about all the work that the mobile team at Automatic did to streamline the process, and I'm gonna share a little bit about the tools that we developed that are all open source so you can use them. Okay, let's get started. Let's see if I can figure this out. As Kate was mentioning, it's a big team. We are 53 people. We have people from 24 different countries. We speak 16 different languages natively. We have 41 mobile engineers, six designers, three infrastructure engineers. This is moving a bit. And we have three quality assurance that we call Excellence Wrangler. We release three apps across iOS, Android, and desktop. The WordPress app that allows you to manage and publish your WordPress site from your phone, the WooCommerce apps that let you run your store on the go, and the Simple Note app, which is the simplest note-taking app there is. Our translation coverage varies from 33 languages on the WordPress apps to 16 in the Woo apps and 19 in the Simple Notes apps. The process of releasing our apps is pretty painless today, but it took us a long time and a lot of effort to get there. My goal is to tell you everything that worked for us so you can have an easier road to success than we did. This story began three years ago when Kate, who just introduced me, took the lead of the mobile team. One of the first things she decided to change was our unpredictable release schedule. We went from, release to, from making a new release every time the next big, big feature was available, which sometimes implied spending months without doing a release, to consistently releasing the apps every two weeks. We've identified that to push out a good release, we need to have a process that's predictable, automated, and collaborative. The release cycle functions at the team heartbeat. Everyone knows when a new bill will be cut since we do it consistently every Monday, every second Monday. So you can imagine on the Friday before how everyone's running around crazy reviewing PRs and getting everything merged. The release train passes every other week and picks up everything that's ready and has been merged to develop. During the next 12 days, we focus on stabilization, and at the end of the two weeks, we submit to the stores. To be ready for release, a new version of the app must fulfill a minimum set of requirements. We need a stable build with no unverified warnings. The build passes all the automated tests run by, run by our continuous integration system. The new or updated strings can be submitted to our community translation tool so we can support as many languages as possible with each new version. Every new feature has to be tested, and the entire apps have to be tested for regressions. We need a proper app store setup showcasing the recent changes. So we need to update the metadata, we need to update strings, we need to update screenshots. Continuously checking every item on this list is only possible if you have very good development practices in place. We rely on strict version control, a GitFlow branching model, and an active community of testers to ship each iteration. I'm not sure if every one of is familiar here with the Git flow model, what we found that it works really well for us. It gives us a few advantages that are great if you need to be releasing consistently. It makes parallel development straightforward by isolating the development of new features from finished work. New development is done on feature branches, and it's only merged back to the main body of code when the developers are satisfied and the code is ready for release. 
Feature branches also make it easy for two or more developers to collaborate on the same feature because each feature branch is a sandbox where the only changes are the ones that are necessary to get the new feature working. That makes it very easy to see and follow what each collaborator is doing. We have a release staging area. As new changes are ready, they get merged back to develop, which is everything that we're going to release next. When the next release is branch of develop, it would automatically pick everything that has been merged so far. It also provides, and this is extremely important on the app source, support for hot fixes. When you, so you tag your release branch and then as you release and you hear that you miss something, you need to be mer make very sure that you're leaving where you left and not from develop. So this is something that Gitflow, make, Gitflow makes easy for us. Automated. This is the part that was harder for us to get right. And this is why. Initially, the same people that were working on product development were working on releases. So working on the automations that we needed to make this process work was in direct conflict with product features. a suit of scripts that made a long and error-prone process it used to be manual. We used to do it with a checklist, going one by one. Now we have everything automated, and it's just much shorter, and we're making less mistakes. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Fastlane. Probably most of you are, but it's a great open source tool to automate iOS and Android development, and have lanes, which are basically a set of steps that have to be done in sequence. We have lanes for each of the following tasks. Code freeze, update App Store metadata strings, new beta release, new internal release, screen job generation, build and upload to iTunes and Google Play, new hotfix release, and finalize release. I am not going to bore you describing each of one of these scripts, but I'm going to talk to you about the two that I think are more notable. And I think that probably the most critical ones and the ones that saved us more time. First one is the code freeze. The code freeze is day one on the release cycle and it's important to get right. So we have one script that does. Updates the local repository, checks out develop and runs some sanity checks. Reads the current version number from the project files and bumps it to the next release number. Creates the release branch. Sets the branch properties to limit merges, commits, and so on. Updates a file with the strings that have been localized. Commits the changes and pushes them to GitHub. Updates a GitHub milestone with the frozen tag and generates a list of PRs that have been merged. Each of those things, again, in the past, when I started working on releases, was done manually. We routinely made mistakes. We were like rushing things out. And all of that is forgotten because we now have one script that takes care of doing all these, checks version numbers, checks for inconsistency, makes sure that the release branch is frozen so nobody can accidentally merge to it. So this one is useful, but not as cool as the next one. These are our screenshots. We have to do this almost every two weeks for all the apps 33 languages in the case of WordPress, all the resolutions. So we can't have a designer doing this, right? Like, it would be more than their full-time job. Fastlane has a tool that's called Frameit for generating screenshots, but Frameit did not give us the flexibility that we needed. So this is why we developed our own tool on top of it. It's a flexible tool that we built to perfect perfectly with Fastlane screenshot tooling on iOS and Android. You can think of it as Frameit on steroid. It's great for times when you need more flexibility than Frameit provides. It allows for fine-grained controls over text, screenshots, and accessory elements, such as pop-ups highlighting specific content or device frame. Like, as you can see, here we are highlighting different contents of each of those screens. That's all done automatically. Another cool thing about this tool is that it's very, very fast. On iOS, we compose 400 screenshots in less than three minutes. 
And it looks great because it uses macOS core text rendering to allow for multi-language read text that can be styled using CSS. Because the configuration is just a JSON file, it works nicely in source control. And because it's a fast lane plugin, you can, be call, it from, you can call it from any of your lanes. I think this is like seriously one of the coolest thing that we've done and open source. Of course, you can automate a lot, right? But there are some things that you can't automate and we all know what price we pay when we make a bad release. So we're suddenly in emergency mode, we're trying to fix things, we don't know if we exactly narrow down the problem and we push out a hot fix that may or may not reach all of our users in a timely manner. So this is why you need to take the time to have a collaborative process where people can give you feedback and interact with each other. This is where collaboration plays a very big role. You need to create the mechanisms for your team to collaborate with each other and to collaborate externally. So I divided this into three things. The release note is one way that we collaborate internally. Basically, when, when your team and your app becomes too big, the release manager cannot know everything that's going in on each release. So what we do is we write the release notes collaboratively. Before you merge something to develop, you update the release note and the release note goes updating itself, let's say, as new features get merged. We also added a tiny check to PRs that says like, I have thought about whether I need to update the release file and I have done it so if needed to. Then the release manager, when they're cutting the release, they go through this file, they clean things up and they send it to the editorial team for one last pass. Your releases need to be fully tested. Of course you need unit tests, of course you need UI tests, but it's very hard to have 100% coverage, right? So this is where you rely on your community of testers. At Automatic, we have two. We have an internal community, which is everyone at the company, that we aim to have them running, a version that's currently frozen, so what's going to be released in two weeks, and we have an external community on TestFly and Google Play. Now, What's the point of these communities if nobody's paying attention to them, right? So you need to have someone whose work is to receive all these bug reports and make a decision. Do we need to fix this on the frozen branch? Or can this wait and does it go to develop? You need to make sure to triage every one of those reports because if people do not feel heard, they're very soon stop reporting. And the same thing goes to, our, to your users, right? It's important to have a place in the app where people can communicate with you directly. And it's important that you answer to them. If you're stage releasing, which we all should be doing, being very close to your users allows you to detect something that you have missed during the stabilization period when you've rolled out to maybe one, two, or 5% of users, and not when you reach 100%. But you need people to be there. You need people to receive those, that feedback. And well, you've all noticed that I went a little bit fast over all of this, so we'll have plenty of time for questions if you want to do that. <laughs> we do have a little secret. We have an infrastructure DevOps mobile team. If you can afford it, we find that hiring someone whose only job is managing releases and improving the tooling is the way to go. This mobile infrastructure here doesn't have the competing priorities of working on product features versus developing automations. They own their release cycle, hence their top priority is for their release train to be always on time. Once we saw what one person could do, we created a whole team focused on infrastructure and release quality by hiring two more engineers and three quality assurance, assurance experts. That's our mobile infrastructure and DevOps team. They sit at the center of the division, and it has allowed us to consistently push out high-quality releases on a bi-weekly basis, dramatically improving our apps or ratings and the overall trust that our users have in our, in our apps and our team velocity. If your team is small, though, and you can't have a DevOps team, 
Make sure you leverage the automation tools that are publicly available and consciously prioritize work on improving your release process. Even if that looks like momentarily is slowing you down on feature development, rest assured that this will pay off on the long run. All the tools that I described today are open source in the WordPress mobile repos. Um, there's a release toolkit repo too. I can share all the links with you afterwards. And we're really looking forward to collaborate with more people, to have more people using them. Like, I'm sure we can do even greater things with the screenshots one to provide like what everyone else needs. And the idea is that we don't, nobody has to do tedious tasks over and over and over again. So once you sort out releases, you can have your people that work on infrastructure focus on something better, focus on like improve caching, focus on improve network layer, focus on whatever it is that your team needs to be more productive. Um, well, I want to thank you all for attending. I look forward to catching up in office hours. I'm sorry if I went too fast. Um, and I want to thank Kate, of course, who paved the way for this team to be created and to Lorenzo, James, and Jeremy, who did most of the heavy lifting around our release toolkit and open sourcing all of it. Thank you. Thank you.